では帝国となりましたので And so, those of you who wish to utilize the simultaneous interpretation service, please use the receiver. If you do not have a receiver, please let our nearest staff know. Let us begin. Konnichiwa.、Uh, good afternoon.、Uh, I apologize for speaking in English, but my Japanese is still so terrible.、Uh, But、uh, I, will, I will try to speak quite slowly、uh, in English. Welcome to the uh, Railway uh, Business Unit.、Uh, do we have the agenda? Next. Okay. So today I want to take you through、uh, the overview of our performance in 2016, some of the important projects that we've been working on. And then our strategy and our plan for 2017, 2018,、uh, and beyond. So, just a reminder of、uh, the Railway BU.、Uh, following the acquisition of Ansel de Breda and、uh, Ansel de STS,、uh, or the majority shareholding in Ansel de STS、uh, back in 2015, we now have a full lineup、uh, of our business. Uh, approximately one third of the lineup is、uh, from Ansaldo SDS. Around 50% uh, is uh, rolling stock, around 26 27% uh, is in our systems and signaling business, the remainder being in turnkey、uh, and OM. These、uh, ratios will stay pretty much stable over the next、uh, three years. Looking at our global coverage,、um, The good news is that we've expanded our business、uh, globally quite rapidly.、Um, we are now leveraging、uh, the rest of the Hitachi Group in terms of access to individual markets. So we're actively bidding、uh, at the moment、uh, in the US, in Southeast Asia,、uh, and in Europe. We're also growing the business quite strongly. You, you notice、uh, on the slide the headcount is now 11,000 people. We increased our headcount by around 1,000 people、uh, in the last year,、uh, in particular in the United Kingdom, and we will grow again、uh, next year、uh, to continue to strengthen、uh, our capability in anticipation of further increasing of our revenues and order intake. So, just a reminder、uh, of our top team、uh, our top team is very stable. Is very strong and is very diverse with a lot of experience、uh, in the railway sector. The one change、uh, this year is Amir San, who's the,、uh, the gentleman on the bottom right of the picture. Amir San has a new responsibility as Chief Digital Officer for the Railway Group. Previously, he was focusing very strongly on the integration between Hitachi Rail Italy and、uh, the rest of the Hitachi Group. That work has proceeded very, very well. So, Amir San is now focusing very much on digital opportunities and how we leverage the digital opportunities, which I will come on to later、uh, in my talk. So, let's have a look at, at 2016.、Um, we did not manage to、uh, meet our targets. And for all of you、uh, who were here last year, I have to、uh, say a big apology. Because the final question last year was, what will be the impact of Brexit on your business? My answer was, I'm not concerned about Brexit because Brexit won't happen. <laughs> Unfortunately, three weeks later, what happened? Brexit.、Uh, so we have to、uh, deal with this situation now. Uh, I don't want you to be concerned because clearly all of our foreign exchange、uh, contracts are hedged. However, because we consolidate our, all of our numbers into yen for our consolidated reporting, clearly for every pound we earn in the UK, it is worth less yen. So, therefore, 
uh, we didn't manage to uh, hit our targets. But I'll come on to that in a little bit more detail later on. Uh, in fact, it seems every time I come to investor relations, there's something happening in the United Kingdom. Uh, today is the election day, so please don't ask me who's going to win, because I'm not going to tell you, because I don't know. I'm, I'm, I failed in that area. Uh, so let's, let's look at our key achievements uh, for this year. We've been very busy, uh, very, very busy uh, delivering on projects uh, in Europe, in the United States, uh, in Latin America, uh, and in Southeast Asia. Um, we've invested a lot uh, to grow our business, in particular in the United Kingdom and in Italy. We've made big investments in new maintenance depots, our new manufacturing plant in the UK is now fully operational and is, and is very busy manufacturing trains. And we've invested quite heavily uh, in Pistoia for a new testing facility. Um, another uh, interesting point last year was this was the first time we attended the very big trade exhibition in Germany, which is the biggest one in the world. We attended this as a joint and Seldo STS and Itachi uh, working together, and we received thousands and thousands of visitors to our stand. So uh, I think we've really managed to build our brand uh, globally as a very powerful uh, and competitive railway company. Uh, looking at the, the, the contract wins, we've won a lot of business as well. So you'll note from this slide there is a, a wide geographical spread of the contracts that we've won, but also there's uh, right across the project portfolio from turnkey to uh, rolling stock to signaling where we've been successful. Um, let me just highlight two in particular. So for example, the rolling stock in Italy is a framework contract for up to 300 double deck uh, trains. This is the biggest contract uh, awarded in Italy, uh, and its potential 300 billion yen uh, opportunity for the company, which will give us very, very stable workload in Italy for several years to come. Another one I, I should highlight is uh, in Taiwan. This was the first time that Ansaldo SDS and Hitachi partnered together to win a very important turnkey project. Uh, this project is around 110 billion uh, yen and uh, was a great success and really evidence of how the two companies are working together uh, very strongly. So let's look, look at the market. Well, the railway market uh, is still a hot market. All of the macro uh, indicators around urbanization, population growth, environmental pressure is all contributing to investment in railways, uh, in particular in uh, developing nations, but also renewal as energy uh, and a lot of other issues come into consideration in technology-rich countries. So the overall market from uh, the, the analysis that, that is published shows railways growing at <coughs> around uh, GDP. However, Hitachi uh, Rail is growing around 11.1% annually in terms of our growth for, uh, for the rail business. Very, very strong growth. I'll come on to that uh, in a little bit more detail. So at this point in time, we are uh, one of four uh, major full capability players. Um, we have some catching up to do for the other three, uh, and I'll talk about how we're going to do that. Uh, the other important thing to note uh, on this slide is the, the block to the left-hand side, the blue block. This is the Chinese company, uh, CRRC, uh, very, very strong, uh, big company. And the important thing to note is that they are actively pursuing export opportunities outside China. And we've seen them uh, gaining a foothold in the United States uh, and being aggressive in the marketplace. So let's look about our strategy uh, and, and what we're going to do. Well, Higashi Harasan has, has, has very kindly given me a target of one trillion yen uh, to grow our business. 
<clears throat> so I'm very grateful, uh, and I'm, I'm actually very confident we can do it. Um, but how are we going to do it? Well, we're, we're looking at four, a number of key areas, but let me focus on the first three in terms of how we're strengthening uh, our key platforms uh, and projects, how we're going to grow our service and maintenance business, and how we use IoT and digital technology to differentiate our offering. So in a little bit more detail, from rolling stock is where it all starts. So looking at the projections of growth uh, in the market in terms of rolling stock, the real sweet spot growth areas are in high speed, in electrical multiple units, and in metro. So we're investing very heavily uh, in, those, uh, in those key products. For high speed, we see opportunities in the United Kingdom, in the US, and in Southeast Asia. Uh, in terms of metro, we are working in a joint venture with uh, Bombardier uh, for the London Tube opportunity, which is huge. It is around 3,000 vehicles, and the plan is that we would manufacture 50% of those in our Hitachi factory in the UK, and 50% would be in the Bombardier factory uh, in the UK. And this is good news for the, for the UK because it is the two UK manufacturers coming together to maximize employment in the United Kingdom and maximize the economic benefit of that investment. The tender uh, is, is ongoing, um, so I'm very hopeful that we can be successful uh, in that opportunity. Um, looking at our rolling stock uh, maintenance business, this is a key area for growth. Um, let me just highlight one particular contract, which is the Intercity Express program uh, in the United Kingdom. We have a contract for 27 and a half years uh, for this contract to provide all of the maintenance services uh, for our customers. We've invested heavily in the capability to fulfill this contract. Uh, and I'm delighted to be able to tell you that the trains will be going into service later this year and we're completely ready uh, in terms of providing maintenance. However, there is a great opportunity for us to improve our profitability and improve our service to our customers through the application of digital technology. So to show you on the slide uh, behind, the first area is in asset management. So we've, we are fitting uh, thousands of sensors uh, to our trains, which are providing back to us in real time exactly the status of the train. So we know exactly what's happening on the train. We know exactly, minute by minute, how to record that data. Now, using the wider group of Hitachi, Pentaho and Hitachi Consulting, we've built a, a very, very clever analytics tool. This will help us reduce our maintenance costs and increase our profitability. It will also differentiate us in terms of the competitive market as we go forward. Because increasingly, our customers are looking at the whole life cost not just the individual rolling stock car price, but the cost of ownership. So this can dramatically change that landscape and reduce our costs as we optimize our maintenance. The other area is uh, dynamic headway and passenger management. Again, using camera technology and data collection, we can analyze exactly how many passengers are looking to use uh, the railway service online at all times. And using this technology, we can vary the headway between trains and therefore optimize the service for our customers. Uh, last night, we signed a very important agreement uh, in this area with a customer uh, in, in Europe. Unfortunately, I can't tell you who it is yet because we're not issuing the press release until tomorrow. Um, I think Itachi Corporate didn't want us to push a press release out today at the same time as IR. Uh, but we're making big progress uh, in this area and in a lot of other areas um, where customers are looking at the application of digital technology for smart ticketing, for the smart use of technology in terms of improving their railway services. Internally, we're doing a huge amount. So we are changing. 
We continue to change. Every year we're changing. This just shows you a number of topics where we're really attacking every element of our business to deliver more value. So we're challenging costs, we're squeezing our SGNA, we're looking at our procurement. So everything is really being focused through the integration to deliver better value. Let's look at our business performance, uh, starting uh, with 2016. I just wanted to show you uh, this slide because this shows you the, the impact of Brexit, uh, which was a, was a one-off uh, unusual event. So if you look at the, the pink color uh, bar on the end, you can see that actually we exceeded our targets in terms of uh, order intake, uh, revenue, uh, and backlog. However, we did not hit our target in terms of operating profit. And the reason for that, one is foreign exchange, obviously. The other one is we've made significant uh, investment to move ro some rolling stock manufacturing from Japan to Italy. What this gives us is the capability to uh, manufacture UK trains both in Japan or Italy, um, which means we can even the loading in terms of our production workload, which gives us more stability and a better utilization of our assets. Looking at more detail going forward, so see order intake there is, uh, is aggressive. We're targeting 20% uh, annual growth on order intake. Revenue, we're targeting 11% uh, increase. We will lift our operating income uh, from 4.2% to 7% over uh, the next three years. Our cash flow will be dramatically improved. Uh, I'll come on to that a bit later. Uh, you can see from the middle chart uh, at the bottom there, our gross margin was reduced last year due to uh, the additional costs of, of transferring production. However, we will improve that this year. We are spending a little bit more on SGNA this year. This is because we are growing so, so fast. We have to continue to hire a lot more people. However, through the integration with the Ansel de Breda company, or Itachi Rail Italy, we have the opportunity to reduce costs. So we're targeting reductions in SGNA through using centralized functions. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, in terms of research and development, we are increasing our investment in research and development. Um, it, it does look in 2018 as though it comes down slightly in terms of uh, going from 34 to 3.1%, but that's because actually our revenue is climbing so quickly, we're still spending more money, it's just less as a proportion of our overall revenue. Um, again, I wanted to show you this chart. Uh, this was our promise. Uh, this is our target uh, last year in terms of our revenues uh, and our profitability. Um, our forecast at the moment is slightly below the target that we promised last year. The difference between our forecast at the moment and our target is purely foreign exchange. However, we have the target to achieve. So uh, we will work extremely hard uh, to recover this target uh, in 2018. I talked about free cash flow. Um, for the last five years, uh, we uh, have been working very hard on the Intercity Express program, which has been a, a huge cash out uh, for the business. The great news is we start deliveries. Um, we start deliveries this year, and therefore we trigger significant payments uh, to us, uh, milestone payments about getting the, the, the trains into service, so we see uh, a significant improvement in our free cash flow uh, next year. Uh, and uh, finally, on the financial side, just to show you uh, the bridge uh, of how we uh, have changed our uh, revenue and operating profit from 2015 uh, up to 2018. Uh, clearly, our revenues are climbing uh, because of the increased project activity we have. We have the impact of foreign exchange, uh, and we also have the amortization of the investment in Ansaldo SDS. That amortization uh, is now st will start to decrease uh, every year uh, and will be complete by uh, 2024. 
So finally, uh, in, in conclusion, um, the market is good. The railway market uh, remains healthy and remains strong. Hitachi is well placed to service that market. We have the full lineup, we have the global access and capability, and we have a strong growing team able uh, to challenge in that marketplace. This year we have uh, some very important deliveries to make. Uh, I'm very confident that we will make those deliveries uh, and enhance our reputation further, and we continue to transform and change our business uh, on an ongoing basis to reflect the challenges uh, that we see in the future. So, uh, we would like to say the questions and answers. On top of uh, Mr. Dormer, a CEO of uh, the Railway uh, Systems. Uh, Mr. Masai and Mr. Yabuta, the CFO of the unit. Uh, your questions uh, are accepted both in Japanese and English. Either is fine. But uh, please uh, state your name and affiliation before asking a question. Any questions? Thank you. Question. I have three questions, actually. Question number one. So the maintenance contract of uh, 27.5 years, as you said, uh, Brexit is happening uh, with a fluctuation of uh, foreign currencies. Uh, this maintenance contract uh, spanning 27.5 years, has uh, your profitability outlook uh, for the contract uh, been affected uh, by uh, the Brexit uh, and other factors, fluctuation of foreign currencies? OK. Um, in terms of the Intercity Express program, uh, the contract is for 27 and a half years, which is a fixed price contract with indexation. Um, in terms of the cost to the business, uh, the cost is predominantly in UK pound uh, because all of our labor is used locally uh, and wherever possible, we have uh, encouraged our suppliers to set up a UK base for the repair of uh, components. So from my perspective, I'm not concerned about the foreign, foreign exchange uh, situation. Uh, clearly, we don't know yet what are the true implications of Brexit uh, until the negotiations happen between the United Kingdom and the European Union. Uh, we hope that there are no tariffs in place or trade barriers uh, because that would affect our ability to export from our Newton Aycliffe factory. However, I believe we've fully hedged that risk through our investment in Italy. So we have access to Europe via Italy and we have access to the United Kingdom via our factory in Newton Aycliffe. Uh, in some sense, actually, uh, Brexit could help our factory in Newton Aycliffe because I think the UK government will be more uh, focused on buying products from the UK rather than importing products from Europe. So actually, this, this could be a benefit uh, for us. Um, and I think we see very stable workloads in the United Kingdom uh, in Newton Aycliffe. Um, we are bidding, as I mentioned, for the London Tube. We will also bid for the High Speed 2 uh, contract uh, in the United Kingdom, where, again, I think local manufacture is extremely important uh, to the government. Uh, so I think we're, we're in, a, in a reasonable position. Thank you. Question number two, page 21, uh, the revenue outlook. Uh, so the order intake and the ones uh, that are outstanding, there's a split between the two, it seems. So going forward, other than the order intake, it seems that the rest is going to dwindle other than the order intake. Uh, is that correct? So this uh, split five years from now, what is it going to be in the next five years? Well, what, what you can see from this is actually our book to bill ratio is increasing. So we're increasing our backlog uh, year on year. So we're actually growing our orders and we're growing our revenues. So therefore, uh, the business remains strong. Our business is very much uh, a long life, long, long life cycle business. 
So we take orders and we then uh, deliver revenues two, three, four, five years after uh, those orders are actually taken. So you can see from, from this chart that in 2017, 87% is already from backlog, which is pretty high. Uh, the remaining 13% will, will be from our service business uh, and components. So I think that revenue uh, is, as long as we deliver on our projects, we will deliver that revenue. There clearly comes a time in the future when our capacity becomes a limiting factor in terms of increasing the business. So this is where we're looking at our strategy to reach the one trillion yen uh, target. We will have to have a, a, a combination, I believe, of organic growth and M&A activity. Uh, all of the growth in the next two years is organic, and it's very, very strong. Uh, but there comes a time when we, we need to increase our, our capacity. Well, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. 87% is uh, based on backlog. I thought it was the reverse. Uh, my apologies for the misunderstanding. My third question is as follows. In the presentation, one trillion yen revenue to be reached. I don't think you were specific in how you're going to achieve that in your presentation. So one trillion yen from Mr. Joymer's perspective, uh, as a person responsible for managing the business, is it a target that should be achieved, or is it something that uh, you should think about uh, in the longer term? Higashara-san may be demanding uh, this be met. Uh, what's your view on this target? I like targets. <laughs> Always. I like to challenge our business uh, to grow, and I think we've been very successful. Uh, over the last uh, four years while I've been the CEO of the business. Uh, and I'm confident that we will continue to grow the business uh, in the next uh, two years up to 615 billion yen. And we have uh, capacity to grow the business beyond, beyond that. Um, I think I was, I mentioned, I think we need M&A as well. Uh, clearly we're looking at a whole number of targets uh, for M&A. I don't want to go into any details because clearly our competitors will be very interested to know uh, what we want to do in this area. But we're very open, uh, we're ambitious, and we're, we're keen to grow the business. So yes, it is a target, but it's a target that I, uh, I welcome and I believe is very achievable for our business. Thank you very much. Question. I have two questions. As you just explained, I would like to ask you about your thinking on M&A. From what you mentioned, during the current medium-term management plan period, you will not consider M&A. But in the years following that, in order to achieve one trillion yen revenue, you will consider M&A. Am I correct? Um, y yes and no. Uh, what I mean by that answer is uh, we're always, we are always considering M&A. Uh, we have a team that are looking at the market now. If the right opportunity comes up, then we will propose that to the executive committee uh, of Itachi Limited. So I don't set uh, a time frame. Uh, I think two years ago we acquired uh, the Anseldo Breda business and the majority shareholding it of Anseldo STS. Uh, so for the last year, we've been very, very busy in terms of the integration of Itachi Rail Italy. However, we, uh, we're now looking for the next step. So whether it is in one year's time, two years' time, three years' time, five years' time, I can't say at this point. Uh, it very much depends on what is available in the marketplace that fits our strategy. <coughs> so in your rail business... Which domain or which business are you targeting any particular companies in particular domain or business? Which companies or areas are possible? We're looking right across the portfolio that, that we, uh, we operate in. Um, 
We strengthened our turnkey and our signaling business very strongly with the acquisition of Anseldo SDS. The application of IoT and digital technology, I think, will make us very strong uh, from a competitive point of view in terms of rolling stock and in other systems. Um, but I don't rule out um, an acquisition in, in any particular area. I think we've strengthened where we needed to strengthen in terms of turnkey uh, and signaling, and we will look to see what is the best fit for our portfolio going forward. Okay, Mr. Thank you, I understand. I have one more question, if I may. London uh, Bureau of Transport replacement uh, deal. In this tendering process, what do you think your chance is in winning this deal? Uh, because I think all the global players are preparing to participate in this bid. So if you could talk about your outlook, please. Uh, well, I think we've put in a very, very competitive bid. Um, so we've worked uh, very closely with our partner, uh, Bombardier. Uh, clearly, I can't talk in too much detail about uh, the details of our tender, but I believe it's very competitive. Uh, I also believe it's the right solution for London because uh, we will be maximizing the manufacturing in the United Kingdom, and therefore we will be contributing the most to the UK economy as part of this investment uh, in London. Um, it could happen that the London Transport uh, Authority could buy from Europe, but considering Brexit has just happened, uh, I think maybe our prospects are a little bit better than they were uh, before Brexit. But I'm certainly not complacent. We're working very, very hard to win that uh, opportunity by providing the best value bid uh, for the customer. Thank you. Any other questions? Chris Cooper from Bloomberg News. Uh, and I'm not going to ask you about who's going to win the election. <laughs> but I, I would like to hear your opinion on what you think are the risks should the uh, the government at the moment lose its majority, mm. um, uh, and whether that's through the currency or any changes in Brexit negotiations, uh, your understanding at the moment, how would the current status quo change? Okay, um, yeah, it's a very good question. Thank you. Um, clearly. We've looked at the situation in terms of both of the main parties in terms of what is their policy, and there are some clear differences uh, between the policy uh, of the Labour Party or the Conservative Party. The good news is they're both committed to uh, investment in railways, and they're both committed to high speed too. So I think um, regardless of the shape of uh, the railway industry in terms of nationalization or private, uh, private ownership, I think uh, both of the parties are pro-rail and pro-investment in rail. So I, th I see that as, as, a, as a very low risk. Um, in terms of uh, the negotiations with the European Union, uh, or regardless of which party uh, it is, clearly we're hopeful that there are no um, barriers between Europe uh, and, uh, and the United Kingdom. However, I think because we have a factory in the UK and we have uh, manufacturing uh, in Italy, I think we can manage uh, this risk by utilizing whichever factory is the most appropriate uh, to contend with uh, this issue. It's fair to say we uh, we built the factory in the Newton Aycliffe with the objective to export to Europe. Uh, that would still be uh, pref preferable uh, for us. Uh, however, um, we have made it clear to the UK government that if that's not possible, then uh, we would expect continued investment in the railways by uh, the UK government. Okay, thank you, Alistair. So one last question.
question. I have one question. Your M&A, uh, China, North and South is uh, integrating and Siemens is now integrating. So why is M&A happening in this industry with Siemens and Bombardia? So political or uh, fighting over territory, which territory is which company, economy of scale. Uh, what? Uh, when M&A happens and when there are less number of players, uh, will this relax the competition? Or uh, what is the drivers of M&A? I think this business will grow five, ten years down the road. So what is the market structural factors that lead to M&A? Uh, so it's a very good question. I, I think there are actually different reasons uh, in, in each circumstance. Um, and clearly, clearly in China, uh, I, I think the objective there was to make one strong national player. Um, the, the rumors around uh, Siemens and Bombardier are purely rumors at this stage. Um, but there have been rumors of consolidation in the industry because there is a, an overcapacity of uh, rolling stock manufacturing, particularly in Europe. As Hitachi, we're in a very good place because our factory utilization is very high. Uh, and our target is to remain uh, our factory utilization very high. We don't have assets sitting around uh, empty. Um, clearly, there is uh, competitive pressure with uh, the CRRC in their export drive. Um, so we expect competition for sure, and the competition to remain uh, strong. Uh, what's important is that we're investing in our platforms, we're investing in IoT technology and digital technology to give us that competitive advantage, both in reducing the whole life cost of our rolling stock, delivering further passenger benefits for our customers, and reducing the cost of operations. So I think. Uh, Hitachi has a very much a technology strategy uh, around our competitive uh, position. That's not to say that we continue to drive down costs, uh, for sure. Uh, as we grow bigger, our buying power is getting stronger, uh, and our ability to reduce uh, our SG&A, uh, we have a lot more opportunity as we've strengthened the group. Well, then it's uh, time to close. So we would like to bring uh, the railway business uh, session to a close. Thank you.